Hey, this is Charles Draven from InfoSpike, and I want to thank you for checking out this video on three powerful affiliate techniques to skyrocket your conversions. And also, I want to let you know that if you watch this entire video, you'll be able to tap into a free course and set of tools that I created that will allow you to use modern technology to boost your business and build conversions over time. And so this is something that um, I put together, this whole video, to help people that are either just getting started, they're not really sure how to actually make sales online, or maybe you've been doing this for one or two years and you're not seeing the conversions that you've been wanting. So this kind of stuff, um, I put this in a way where it's very simple to understand. It might seem extremely um, basic, but I wanna dive into the core elements of this because I believe that even you might've seen a course before on this, you need to think about these topics more in depth because it might have been something that seems so simple you skipped over, but these are very key, key principles that you need to really tap into. And this will help you, of course, boost your conversions online. So let's talk about this whole thing. Um, you gotta know your audience. And that seems very simple, but um, when you are trying to figure out how to build your business, like let's say I'll focus on this example today, which is, uh, my audience, which are people that are just getting started trying to find a way to make um, recurring stable income online. The one big thing that I see here is that people look at things at a very high level. Like people are just thinking, okay, I just want to create content where people are just trying to find ways to make money online. But as you know, there's a reason why people want to make money online. What are their fears? What are the things that they want to achieve in their life? What are their desires? What are the things that they want to experience, um, whether it's with um, their family, their friends, on their own? A lot of these things are um, kind of like the psychology, the behaviors of people that you need to understand. And you do this by looking at forums, you do this by looking at websites, um, you look at social media to see what are the core uh, strengths and weaknesses of people so you can understand their psychology and actually um, utilize affiliate marketing as a way to provide them with a solution. So what are tools and techniques for identifying audience needs? So as I mentioned, um, looking at the conversations that are happening and believe it or not, um, AI, like let's say if you want to tap into tools like ChatGPT, you could ask the GPT, you know, whatever AI model you're using, you could ask it questions. You could actually try to find out, here's my situation, here's my product, here's this website. What type of problems can I solve with this? And it might come up with a list of all these different things that you might not have ever experienced. So that is actually one quick, simple way to do it. And then of course, you wanna make sure that you, your message is connecting with that market. And understand that people, they have um, different phases when they are um, purchasing. When a person is very familiar with a product, it's because they are trying to find a way to solve a problem. They're trying to look for a solution. But what if a person has a problem but doesn't have that mindset that they, they are wanting to look for a solution? Then the type of messaging that you will create will be very, very different um, compared to a person that is actively looking for something. So for example, if you are um, working with somebody, trying to communicate with somebody that is familiar with a very specific product, for example, uh, for example, like let's say Facebook ads, I could talk about Facebook ads in a message and go into it as if the person already knows what it's all about because they are actively looking for Facebook advertising. However, if I talk to somebody that um, is in the same situation, trying to uh, build a business online, but has no idea about paid ads, and I start talking to them about the same type of topics uh, related to Facebook ads, this person will probably have no clue what I'm talking about. So the messaging will um, change depending on the stage that that person is in. Um, so it changes, especially the buyer psychology changes. There's so many things that happen over time. So let's talk about um, one of the big things here is 
when you communicate with people, you communicate through content. And one of the most effective ways to do that is by telling a story. And a story can come in different forms. So many people think that it's just talking about their life story. And the thing is that there's so many different types of stories out there. You could even talk about a story that you learn from a book, from a movie. Uh, maybe you uh, read the news and you found out about somebody else's struggles. Maybe you read a book. Um, maybe that there's um, a cultural story. Maybe there's a story that's like a fable. There's so many different ways to tell a story. But you want to find out what can you do to create content that is very relatable to that story and your target audience. And then there's various different types of uh, content that you can create to boost conversions. People are able to create sales through written content, through video content, audio content. And even within that, there are different types of content. So for example, uh, with written content, there could be reviews. And then there could be sales letters. There's something where somebody understands the psychology of the person on the other end, and they're able to craft content that has some psychological triggers, you know, and they're able to actually do that through something called copywriting. So even though it's written, that it, it comes across in a different way. So again, there's various types of content that you could use to drive sales. And I would say across all those different types of content types, the main thing is that you are very consistent. You're, you're able to create this highly relevant content, something that the person that is reading it, your audience, is something that they want to actually read, something that provides value and can help them solve their problem. So the next question is social media posts versus video reviews, which works the best? So. As I mentioned, there's different types of content out there with social media posts. You have text content, you have images, you have videos. And so like, let's say that if we're talking about what works better, social media videos versus YouTube videos. Like, let's say for that, in my personal experience, um, the content that has worked the best for me regarding sales, it's actually been YouTube. Um, I'm experimenting with a lot of video content right now on Facebook and on Instagram and TikTok, short, uh, short form videos. But I can say that the ones that have led to the biggest commissions for me have been from my videos. So I'm just telling you what I'm seeing right now that's on YouTube. So that's what works best for me at this point in time. Um, SEO best practices for maximizing reach and impact. So no matter what content you create, I'd say like one of the easiest ways to get content um, listed in the search engines and to rank it is first of all, you want to have a title that includes the topics that you're talking about. Those are called keywords. And of course, some keywords are more competitive than others. So if you are trying to get to number one, just using search engine optimization, whether that's Google, some other search engine, or even YouTube, or, or even Pinterest, make sure that you are using words that aren't the extremely popular words. They have to be uh, words that um, are, again, uh, medium to low competition. That's what I focus on. And here's an example. Let's say that I'm trying to um, help people uh, make money online. So what do you think is more popular? The phrase, make money online, or um, how to make money uh, from home using your laptop and your smartphone, something like that. I'm just saying that those words, those additional words, actually are, as a whole, as a group, aren't as popular as make money online. So that's what I'm talking about. I try to focus on topics that aren't extremely popular. Um, it's like, again, low to medium, uh, and that helps pass, you know, surpass the competition. Uh, next thing here is analyzing and adjusting your strategies. I'm going over this because it's a very um, overlooked strategy. People, they'll see the whole idea of analytics. They'll think it's just like Google Analytics or something like that. And they just might look at it once in a while to see how much traffic they're getting. But seldom do I see people learn from that data. 
So what you want to do is look at the key metrics that will lead to your success. So for somebody like myself that's promoting high ticket, it's not so much in Google Analytics for me. It's not so much in Facebook Analytics or Instagram Analytics or even TikTok Analytics. It's more about how many leads am I generating every day? How many targeted leads am I generating every day? And that is probably the, the core metric for me. Because once I get a lot of targeted leads, then that will actually amount to sales. And it's not just about saying targeted leads. There's so many people that just want to make money online. It's about targeted, high quality leads. And that quality, it for me, it is actually derived based on where I am getting those leads from. So if I'm using some trash traffic tacti uh, tactics, uh, I'm not going to mention them right now, but there's so many uh, kind of like super simple, um, super easy, super low cost or, or free strategies that are like junk traffic strategies. Just because you're able to get leads, it doesn't mean that they're high quality. So the whole idea here is focusing on high quality sources. And if you're getting them organically, if you're getting them because people are actually doing some additional effort to actually get what you want them to, to get from you, you know, your lead magnet, then you are actually boosting the quality. If people um, are just doing it because they're incentivized, somebody's paying them money, or maybe it's bot traffic, something that's automated, it's not even a human being, just because you get a lot of leads, it doesn't mean that it's high quality. So just keep that in mind. So that is my key metric, um, high quality targeted leads, and that's in the high ticket realm. And then how to use analytics to refine your approach. So uh, one of the things that I'll talk about here before I close off is uh, I talked about leads. So let's say that my whole idea is for somebody to download my course on um, AI. I have a course called AI Income Engine. So this is a free course with a bunch of tools. So the way I can see uh, if I'm generating leads um, very efficiently is to actually create at least two versions of that form. So probably something I could change up in that form is a headline. And so I have two forms and each one has a unique headline. And then I send traffic to one link and it either goes to form version one or form version two and then it flip-flops, it keeps on changing. And the whole uh, reason, the big reason why I do that is because it's something called A-B split testing. And I'm able to see which headline is actually performing better than the other. And then of course, once uh, I figure out this is the one that is doing well, then that is the main version I'll be using. And so that is actually just one way to actually refine your approach when it comes to generating leads in my business generating leads is actually a very big deal but that is the strategy that i use a very basic strategy and then um, adapting to trends so this is something that happened to me in recent years so google is one of the big search engines around and if i wasn't cognizant of the various trends around I would say, okay, I'm just going to blog forever. I'm just going to focus on blogging. There's a bunch of people on YouTube that are still making money blogging and they talk about blogging. And then I'm just going to focus on that. But if you have been involved in blogging, especially in the last couple of years, you'll see that so many sites got decimated, including a lot of mine. And so for me, the whole thing is pivoting. When you are familiar with the trends, if you hear about the trends even before it hits the news, then you're better prepared to handle those struggles. And the, di the market is very dynamic. Digital marketing is very dynamic. Um, the algorithms change across all these different platforms at different times. So the main thing is just trying to be ahead of the game as much as you can, trying to tap into circles, getting guidance from people that um, are at higher levels of business than you are because their business is at stake, especially if it's seven figures, eight figures, or nine figures that can actually be at loss, then they are, of course, more in tune than people that are just doing this part-time. So tap into the circles of knowledge. Tap into the communities that 
um, have people that are going through similar experiences using similar strategies as you so you could actually stay up to date on this and that'd be actually my big advice so earlier um, I talked about the free course and a free set of tools and it's very simple just just uh, go to the link in my description now link in the description will allow you to unlock a course that I put together that has multiple videos that will help you get trained on how to make money online and allow you to utilize the tools that I've been using to help you build your business faster than ever before. So go ahead and check it out. Check out the link in my description. And my name is Charles for, uh, from InfoSpike. Thank you for watching.